بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا كريم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وعلى أصحابه يجمعين أما بعد أهبت في الله as we mentioned prior to this fasting is a shield fasting is also a shield from the shahwat itself from your desires when we say shahwat in Arabic uh, this is the plural for desires a shahwa is the singular for desire and shahwat means desires plural so fasting is a shield a protection not just from the hellfire, but also from your desires. Li hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala'in Qala laqad qala lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya ma'ashar al-shabab Min istata'a minkum al-ba'a Fal yatazawaj Fa innuhu aghdu lil-basar Wa ahsan lil-faraj Wa man lam yistata'a فَعَلَيْهِ بِسُونَ فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاءٌ أَحَبَّتْ فِي اللَّهِ This hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim, متفقٌ عليه And it's the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه and he said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, O youth, ya ma'ashir al-shabab, O youth, whoever amongst you that's able to get married, then marry. For verily, it helps you lower the gaze, <coughs> and it's better for your private parts. And whoever is unable from amongst you to, uh, who, whoever is un unable to, then it is upon him fasting. For verily, it weakens the shahwat, it weakens the desires. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Ahabat al there are immense benefits from this hadith. And from the benefits of this hadith, is that the one who is able to and has the desires meaning that getting married it can have different ahkam it can have different rulings that sometimes an individual they are getting married is not a priority for them it's not a big deal they're not uh, they don't have the fitna of a lot of desire, some people are focused on wealth, they're focused on their career, they're focused on whatever the case may be. And it may not be a problem for them to restrain themselves until a more appropriate time. So in this case, it is desirable for them to get married, but it is not an obligation. Then there's another class of people. Those people who have very a great difficulty uh, and it's a burden for them to be alone. Some people can't be alone without a, a, a spouse and they have the means so for this person that not only are they experiencing maybe sadness for loneliness from not having a, a, a partner or a spouse but they also might feel uh, they might have high desires high shahwa and it might cause them to do the muharramat uh, the, the muharram it might cause them to commit zina it might cause them to masturbate it might cause them to look at pornography and all these kind of uh, different forms of muharramat. And in this case, this person, if they have the means especially, then it's an obligation upon them to get married. They should get married. And then there's other classes of people. So the Prophet والسلام, said, Ya ma'ashir al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'a. Whoever is able from, from, from you uh, the, to marry, 
then they Philiatozoids, then they should marry. And this is in the Siga, or this is the he used the imperative form, which means that it was a a uh, a command from the Prophet He commanded that you marry if you have the means. And the scholars differ over the, the term, the word al-ba'a. And since this is not a uh, a book of hadith where we could go into the explanation and look at some of the the explanations, some of the scholars mention this term though, al-ba'a, that this means, some say that it means the, the, the means, the financial means that you're able. For example, the the man who has a job and he can afford to take on a wife. This is, as some of the scholars say, this is what al-ba'a al means. Whereas another group of the scholars mention that this term al-ba'a refers to the, uh, in general, that it's a general meaning and that it refers to the one who is sexually able to fill, fulfill the terms of, of marriage. That this person has, has the desires and they have the strength, so to speak. So, the ones who say that it means, that it's general, that it means the financial means as well as the sexual means or the physical means, that... Uh, for this person that even if they don't have the financial means they should still get married if it's going to be a danger for their religion so if they find a, a woman who's willing to accept the fact that this person doesn't have the financial means or, or has limited financial means and he's trying his best of course we're not talking about someone who's lazy he's living in the mission he doesn't even try or you know to get a job or what have you, he doesn't even try to have, have the means. We're not talking about this, but you know, of course we know as Muslims we shouldn't beg and that we should strive our utmost to earn a livelihood, to have some sort of income, whether you're a business person or whether you are uh, a person who uh, has a job or what have you. So this, so as I mentioned, the scholars differ over this term ba. So the one who has this, either this physical ability or this um, this financial ability or both, then they should marry the Prophet said. And we mentioned that it has different rulings. Because when you marry, when you at least have something, someone pleasing to look at, and this goes for the men and the women, that the brother, <clears throat> if he has a wife who's pleasing to his eye, this will help him and aid him in lowering his gaze when he goes out to the marketplace, when he goes out to the mall, when he is whatever, wherever he has to go in, in his workplace, wherever in the society. It will help him if, his, if he has a woman who pleases his eye and she strives to beautify herself for him and keep herself fit if the husband is a husband who desires his, his wife to be uh, fit. That it, it, it helps to lower the gaze. And it is better for the private parts. So again, going back to the helping to lower the gaze, likewise, because in this time we are specially tested the men and the women with the social media, with the internet, with all the various devices, people can have a porn factory in their rooms. You can have a righteous household, the door closes at night and your daughters or your sons are, have a porn factory, literally. Have a whole library of pornography on their phones, on their on their computers. Likewise, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our children from that, ameen, and the Muslims in general, ameen, because it's of great fitness for the whole society. So, with this being the case, meaning that we're exposed to much more uh, stimulus now in this day and age. It isn't like before. Even when I was growing up, there wasn't any internet. There wasn't any of this stuff. So it was a big deal to even see, even before Islam, for me to see uh, 
a, a porn magazine or to see a, a, a VCR tape. Even I didn't really see that stuff. I very rarely came across that stuff. And so then I didn't even have a desire for that. It didn't mean anything for me. Other people may be different, but for me in my before Islam and stuff, I didn't even it didn't even phase me because it wasn't pushed down her throat. Now you open the net and even if you don't try in your in your internet inbox, in your spam and this it's coming at you. You're seeing negligee, you're seeing and the standards, the more moral standards are different. So the stimulus is different. So the women are seeing everything and the men are seeing everything. So likewise, the men should try to maintain keeping themselves fit. How many times in the souk do we see women with wandering eyes? Their husbands are out of shape. Their husbands don't take care of themselves. And the women, she's with her husband and she's out of pocket. She's, she can't lower her gaze. She's miftoon, fitna on her heart. So it's a sin on her. So what can help us to avoid this sin is taking care of ourselves and being that 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 uh, helping that assistance for the desires of our, our our partners our spouses because and that's what marriage is supposed to do it's supposed to help and assist in lowering the gaze for the men and the women and protect the private parts and I think that goes without saying that if you're married, at least you have a halal means for taking care of your desires so that the person will not be tested in the same way as the one who's not married. The one who's not married, who deals with the fitna that we deal with today, I mean, I've talked to some of the youth, and I'm here in Saudi Arabia, and I've talked to some of my students. And they say, who doesn't from amongst us use <laughs> Vaseline and things like this? And may Allah forgive us uh, of our many sins and forgive me for being so explicit, but I just want to be very upfront. He said, who from amongst us doesn't? For them, it's not, they don't even think twice about it. Why? Because they're so miftoon. They're so, they don't have... And it's difficult because the mahars are very expensive and all these other societal barriers for them and, tr and difficulties and obstacles to marriage, then they're miftoon. Lowering their gaze, that's not even, they don't even be, uh, think about that. Unless they, those rare, illim and rahim Allah, except the ones who Allah has favored with mercy. So then what about the private parts? Of course, then they are, maybe they masturbate, as we mentioned. We, where I'm in the city I'm in, hordes of people go, unfortunately, to the neighboring countries every weekend. Ramadan, they're stopping now. But they fill the bars and the clubs on the regular after Ramadan. Why is this? Why is it in mass like this with the youth? Whoever amongst you has the ability for Mary. Because there is a weakness in practice in the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. They put obstacles to marriage, uh, tribalism, racism, uh, expensive mahars, and, and, and other factors which make it difficult to marry. So they don't even see that as an, uh, a possibility. So then they do the muharram until eventually they can afford to marry if, they, if Allah favors them to make it out of that. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ لَمْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِسَوْمٍ Here's the shahid of what I intended to, to speak about. Whoever from amongst you is unable, then he should fast. So fasting is prescribed, is a prescription to help lower the shahwa. Because it's an exercise in taqwa. Because when you fast, then at least, even if you want to look, you might refrain from looking at that woman on the street, at that video, simply because you're fasting and you, it reminds you, ah, let me at least finish my fast. So I'm going to lower my gaze. I'm not going to look this time. That's an exercise in taqwa. Because you did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why this in twofold, 
For one, it's a practice in taqwa. And number two, fasting helps to weaken your shahwa. You don't have the same, it's not the same desires as when you're not fasting and you're filling your belly. And there's a relationship. Ibn al-Qayyim speaks about it. So as far as the deen, imams like Ibn al-Qayyim went into depth about these issues, about the how the how the stomach, uh, a full stomach, how that affects the, the private parts, how it, the relationship and your desires. Fill in those desires of the stomach. There's a relationship there. There's also physiological things going on with our body and fasting. The body's related. Our mind, our body, and our soul, it's, it's all one. It's related. If you feel a lot of pain or you restrain yourself from certain things, it's doing stuff to your blood sugar levels. It's doing stuff to your your whole body is affected. Your thinking process is affected. Your physical is affected. So that's just from some of the wisdom of the, the fasting. So fast if you're unable to marry. And the Prophet ﷺ articulated it. And now we just find out through science and other means that it's true, uh, you know, that that we believe it's true as Muslims anyway. The Prophet Sallallahu said, فَإِنُّهُ اللَّهُ وِجَاءَ That it is, uh, you know, it, it weakens the shahwa. It helps to weaken the desires and lower the desires. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمِدْ وَعَلَى عَلَيْهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَمَ